Hello, welcome. I'm going to be doing a little video on the basics of, of how to use your navy. I did a video on the naval meta, what to build and what doctrines to go. I also did a separate video specifically on carriers and some of their quirks. I'll link those in the description. But for this video, we're just going to go over how to use your navy. Not all of the controls are particularly intuitive. Let's just start with the British. We've got quite the navy to start off with 237 ships spread out all over the world. But we want to train our navy to get that naval experience. So how are we going to go about grouping them? The easiest way to group them is just to click here while holding shift and select all of them and right click them into reserve. From here, there's two things you can do. You can press G and merge them up, and then they will merge onto probably the fifth submarine flotilla, wherever that is in the world. The other thing you can do is right click it into a fleet and then move it to a specific base. Just by right clicking on that base, all of your ships will then move there. And then once the ships are there, you can merge them. Because if we right click these back into reserve and we just select them, we tell them to merge. They are all now going to go to the fourth submarine flotilla. It's located in Singapore. So if we just click on the fleet here, it'll take us right to the fleet. And now every ship in the British Navy is going to merge to this point. But I don't want it in Singapore. I want my fleet in the UK. So if I take the ship and move it to London, it's now going to move to London. But the rest of these ships are going to merge with the fourth submarine flotilla. So if we let the game run and watch what happens, you'll notice every ship is going to start heading to Singapore. Meanwhile, 4th Submarine Flotilla is moving back to the Greater London area. All the while, we have now run ourselves out of fuel. So pressing G to merge can end up being a colossal waste of fuel. It would have been much better for us to have just manually moved all of these to Sussex and then merged them. This is important as some nations, some nations start with a small amount of fuel, but a lot don't have much in daily gain. So you want to preserve that starting fuel so that you can spend it on naval exercises rather than wasting that fuel moving your navy across the globe. And in the time it's taken to do this, we have completed two destroyers. So we can also assign that to our main navy. And you can come up here and you can rename it whatever you want. You can be particularly creative like me and call it main fleet. And some of these ships are still heading to Singapore. So what that means is they did not run into this fleet while they were trying to head to Singapore. So they went all the way to Singapore, realized the fleet wasn't there, and then went, oh wait, now it's in London, and moved all the way back to London. Now there's two ways to exercise your navy. If you click this button, or shortcut K, it'll start exercising. And this will just train your navy, converting all of the fuel you have into naval experience. The other way you can do it is if you hold shift, they will only train until they're level three, and then they'll stop sort of. You'll see your fuel consumption reduced and your naval experience gain reduced, but it's still going to be higher than if you had just split off the ships that were not level three. Now, when you're training your navy, be wary of certain sea zones. So the Danish belts here during the winter, they are considered Arctic water, which means during the winter that you take 10% attrition. That is just strength damage that your ships are going to take which means you're going to have to repair them, which is a waste of dockyards. Another thing you should do while you're training your ships is click on this automatic split off button. This will prevent your ships from being destroyed. If your ships become sufficiently damaged during training, they will split off and repair. Damaged ships stop training at a certain point. When they lose enough strength damage, they just don't train. So if you don't have this automatic split off enabled, they won't repair and they won't reach level three. Other things about moving a navy, when your navy is on an order like strike force if you right click you can move the naval bases in if you control right click it'll disable the order and move the fleet to that place if you alt right click it'll keep the order and move them there if you're moving a fleet to a naval base you do not have to care about range this says we can't reach bermuda but if we just right click to the naval base they will just move to bermuda however do be careful if your navy is on an order that requires them to cross a area that they do not have the range to do, they can end up getting stuck. So right now, this is a new bug that has been introduced. My fleet is stuck here. I should be able to send it to Bermuda, but because it's stuck, it can't go. Now, if I right click the Bermuda naval base, they'll move to Bermuda. And now that they're in the sea zone, they'll start operating. But that's something you have to be wary of. Because if we do it again the other direction, if we go, oh wait, no, we need them over here, they will do the same thing. Oh look, those other ships finally decided to show up. Look, they get stuck. This did not used to happen in the past. Other things to go over is straits. So Gibraltar here says that we can pass because it is currently under friendly control. Because we control one half and we are not at war with the other side, so we are good. We can pass through. If we were at war with Spain though, that would change. 
So let's just no CB war them. No CB best CB. And let's also turn off the AI so that they don't try and take that province. So now this strait is now considered contested. Armies, navies, and trade cannot pass through the strait, but it says submarines can. So let's split off our submarines and tell them to go to Malta. And they just go straight through. I've seen some people claim that submarines count as fleets and therefore they won't go past, but it went past just fine. If we pull this unit out, tag to Spain, wait for the unit to move and then take this province, this is now enemy relations. So it's actually the same as contested, but we shouldn't be able to move this fleet past here. But if we just right click this port, it'll move past just fine. If we just right click right next to it, it still moves past. Some of the people who think that's bugged, it works just fine. The Bosphorus and Darnells are a special strait. If we tag to the Soviets, because they are on the Black Sea, they should be able to move everything through here. And you can now send your Black Sea's fleet out into Leningrad, or you can move your entire Baltic Sea's fleet into the Black Sea to guarantee you naval supremacy in the Black Sea so that you can launch annoying invasions of Romania, and Bulgaria and force them to garrison their coast, pulling units off the front line. So now let's move on to the different order types. So we'll start with patrol. For patrol, you want fast ships with high spawning. The best ships for this purpose is going to be your light cruisers. It is the main reason you might build light cruisers. This means you're going to want to come in here. You're going to want to research improved airplane catapults for additional surface detection. And you're going to want to create a design, something like this. You'd only need the cheapest battery you don't need aa it's going to force you to put something in this slot so rather than wasting something on fire control you can just swap to sonar and then you can just put your improved float planes across the top here and this will give you really high speed and really high surface detection so if you're going to use spotting fleets you're going to want to use some sort of this design so if we just take some of our existing light cruisers Let's just check for speed. Yeah, we're probably going to want the Leander class. We're going to want to put them on do not engage so that they don't actually engage the enemy fleet until the battle starts. And then you just need a couple. Each fleet will take up one sea zone. And then if we tag to Spain, if we put their fleet out on patrol here, we will see the spotting mechanic. We have higher surface detection than them. That's going to increase the amount we detect them each hour. We have a higher speed than them. So that's also giving us a small bonus. Not nearly as important, but if your speed's lower than them, that can be quite detrimental. And then you just have the base. So if we combine this with a fleet that is on strike force, what this ship is going to do is it's going to spot it, keep it spotted, and then our surface fleet, if it thinks it can win this battle, will come and engage it. That is the purpose of patrols. However, if you noticed, I had to put the enemy fleet on patrol for that to work. So that's patrol. Strike force works well in coordination with patrol, convoy escort, convoy raiding. Basically, your fleet is just going to sit in port and it's going to wait for a battle to happen. And when a battle happens, your engagement rule is going to be taken into consideration. And if you're always engaged, then as long as it's not subs just attacking convoys, your fleet should sail at a port and try and engage the enemy's fleet, like it did when we patrolled and spotted that Spanish fleet. Strike Force is also very good at getting naval supremacy in different sea zones. For Strike Force, it does not actually matter how many sea zones you are protecting. You get the same amount of fleet supremacy. Naval supremacy is scaled by low intel on the enemy. Having complete air superiority over sea zone can really impact your superiority and your intel. The other way you can get naval supremacy is with the naval invasion support order. So if I want to naval invade from the English Channel to Normandy, and we'll just set up a little order there this fleet will now move to this naval base when you launch this order the fleet will protect it the entire way through and if we check we're getting 29 618 slightly more because we have better intel efficiency is when they move along this order and they sit here you're going to want to stop the order so if we, we know cv the french we activate the order and our fleet decides to move to london okay nope nope it stopped itself it fixed itself so while we're sitting here even though we're holding position right here trying to give naval bombardment, we are using fuel. We're using 8.9 fuel. If we press Control H, our fuel consumption disappears. And now while we're here, the enemy is getting the shore bombardment penalty. That has a maximum of 25%. This is calculated as 0.1% per heavy attack or 0.05% per light attack. So you either need 250 heavy attack in your fleet or 500 light attack or a combination of the two. 
To get the full penalty, you can't get more than 25%. Even with naval liaison, that does not increase the max penalty. That just reduces the amount of heavy attack you need to get that. Or ground pounder. Convoy rating is quite simple. You just right click to establish a couple sea zones. If you want to remove a sea zone, just shift right click and you will now convoy raid in these sea zones. So with this sort of system set up, we will now be looking for Spanish convoys and we will try and sink them. If we turn on AI, they might try and do something about this. See, the AI ships have shown up now. This means if we had our fleet on strike force, they will now move to assist in this battle because they've had actual ships show up. They will not move just for the convoys. Now, if we actually get there in time, we will now engage their fleet. Convoy raiding like this is the most effective way of drawing out the enemy's fleet to the point where you can actually just convoy raid with your main fleet if you have the fuel for it to draw out the enemy fleet. The other thing you can do is rather than use subs, you take some of your terrible destroyers you start the game with. These destroyers have no light attack, they have very little torpedo attack, and what you do is you split these off and you can use these for convoy raiding or convoy escorting. So you assign them to a bunch of regions to convoy raid. Eventually, they'll catch enemy shipping. But because they have so little attack, and they're also decently fast, so they're hard to hit, they kind of just sit in the battle. And if you put them on always engage, they won't retreat. So you'll basically just force the enemy to engage on you because it looks at this destroyer fleet and goes, this fleet's garbage. We can easily beat that. So it goes and tries to engage you. But because they're destroyers, they're hard to hit. And because you have them on always engage, they won't retreat. And that will give your fleet ample time to get there. Bonus of this is also, once you've succeeded in doing that and taking out the main surface fleet of your enemy, you can now just swap to convoy escort. And as you can see at the bottom, it's saying we have low sub detection. We should add more ships with sonars, radars, or airplane catapults. And that is true. If you're going to make dedicated destroyers for the purpose of anti-submarine warfare, you should probably put a depth charge on it. Put the best sonar you have on it. If you have radar, you can put radar on it and then put a light battery on it. You need to get the sub-detection number up. On the flip side, if you don't actually care about sinking them, you can just pump out a whole bunch of cheap destroyers. I was about to say, now that's everything. That's all of the different orders. But it's not. There's mine sweeping and mine laying. Now mine laying can be quite useful. So if we if we uh, right click this button here, it'll remove all of our regions from this navy. And what we can do is assign them to mine lay in the English Channel. Now for them to actually do this, they do need mine laying rails. You might be better off taking the cheapest submarine you can, and then just putting a mine laying tube on it. These are much cheaper. They have the same mine laying stat, and they're much harder for the enemy to spot and sink. So this will lay mines, and you can only lay mines while you're at war. But it will slowly add some mines. We don't actually have many ships that are good at this. And you're much better off finding usually the cruisers that have mine laying on them. Yes, the adventure class. So we have one adventure class cruiser, which has three mine laying. So every other ship in this fleet, other than that adventure class, can go home. Because they don't actually have any mine laying. And then these guys will slowly lay mine more mines and for every 10 mines you get you get a one percent bonus for the effects of mines on our naval supremacy so this is something you can actually do as the uk while you're waiting for germany to take out poland and the benelux and france while their fleet is likely to be sitting at home is you can have a couple of cheap mine laying chips that are just here dropping mines to just give you a little bit of bonus to your naval supremacy. This will help counter any air supremacy that they have. Now, to beat this, you can also mine sweep. Mine sweeping also requires a special module. You can get this cheap little module here. The speed of the ship doesn't matter. You can just produce a couple of these cheap little ships and they can be used to clear the enemy mines. Honestly, there's a reason I nearly forgot about these. Very few people use it. But as you can see, there's a quite significant penalty. Minus 80% naval speed, plus 15% accident chance, plus 50% invasion penalty. When you have fully laid all the mines you can, you get quite a significant bonus. And that naval speed means if you can lay mines and then trick the enemy into fighting in that sea zone, they're going to be so slow compared to you. They're going to be incredibly easy to hit. And the accident's chance just means they're more likely to take damage. If you fully mine out a sea zone, you can actually cause the enemy to lose ships just by sailing through it, which can be quite potent if you're playing as a small nation. But if you're playing as a nation as England, that's not that big of a deal. Anyways, this is basically everything you need to know about actually using your navy. I think the most important thing you can take from this is the convoy raiding aspect. You need to convoy raid with something that is considered weak to draw out the enemy's fleet. 
no amount of patrolling with the best spotting cruisers you could build will ever do anything if the enemy's fleet is just sitting in port on strike force. You need to create a battle to cause that fleet to come out. And convoy rating is excellent at that. Anyways, as I mentioned, if you want to know what to build, I did do a naval meta guide, which I have put in the description, and a guide on carriers and all of their quirks, like the fact that you can use more than four. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.